Hey guys, welcome back to Resin Bell. Today's project, I am making some last minute Christmas gifts and these are some silicone bakeware uh, spoons, spatulas, etc. Now these right here, I picked up at the Dollar Tree and yes, I know the Dollar Tree is now $1.25. It's still within a dollar. So, um, you know, you have to decide yourself if that's worth it or not, but on we go. Um, so picked up these and I thought these would make really cute little stocking stuffer type gifts um, doing a little engraving on them and doing some engraving on these as a gift for my mom so I'm going to go through the steps of how you would engrave these using your Glowforge I'm going to show you how you set up the lettering and um, a little bit about how to use Inkscape which is a free software so let's get into this right now all right, so this is Inkscape, and it is a free software you can get online. I have talked about it before, but I'm just going to go through um, kind of showing you how to do this real quick. These I already have set up. These are the different sizes for the pink spatulas, but I'm going to go through um, showing you what to do, you know, how to, how to get that uh, SVG file that you need to engrave your spoons and things like that. So we're just going to choose, um, you know, the type font and we're going to type out spatula. <laughs> um, so let me zoom in a little bit here for you. Move this up over here. Now you guys can see better. All right, so we've just typed out our word. We're going to go up here and to our drop down and choose a font. I'm just going to pick one that is not too. There we go. We'll just use that. All right, that is an Amsterdam font. So what we need to do um, after we've typed it out, then we're going to click this arrow button right here. And that's just so that you can select and move things around. That takes you out of the typing mode. So, now we've got that. Now we're going to go up here to Path. And click on Path. We're going to go Object to Path. And that's very important because your Glowforge will not recognize just a typed font. And then we're going to go over to Object. We're going to go down here to Ungroup. I'm going to click that. That separates each letter into its own area. Then we're going to go back to path. We're going to go down to union. So that's it. That is now um, a path with 415 nodes, one layer, um, and it's ready to be engraved or cut. Now, if you're wanting to cut this, you're going to go down to the bottom of the screen, down here in this area right here. So you're going to hit, if you're wanting to create a cut file, you're going to hit shift, hold shift down, and click on the red. Then you're going to go over here and click X. Let go of the shift button and then click X. Now we're going to go back up here. And you can see that has turned that uh, into an outline. Let me go backwards. So we went down, we hold shift, we click red. That gives us our outline. You can see there's a red outline around all the black. And then we go down and we click that X and that basically erases the center color. So then you have your outline. Or if you want it to engrave on the Glowforge, all you do is go down and click the blue. You don't hold shift. The shift gets you to the outline stage. Um, just clicking the blue changes the color and then Glowforge usually automatically reads that as it's supposed to engrave, okay? Uh, and then when you get into the Glowforge um, software, then you can, um, you can choose your different parameters and all that. Now the next thing you need to do is determine how big you want um, your lettering to be. And so you're going to need to measure 
the thinnest point. So like how long your your design, how long you want your design to be. Let's say you want it to be three inches. And then you need to go in at that three inch mark and determine how wide it is at that point. Because these spatulas usually have like, you know, a tapering design. They'll be thicker at one part and thinner at the other. So what you have to determine is the thinnest part where your engraving is actually going to be. Now if your design's only two inches long, then you've got a lot more area to work with. But if it's three inches, you've got to figure out what the minimum or the maximum width can be. So let's say like half inch right there, right? So your whole design would need to be a half inch unless it is wider at this point and skinnier here. So and then we're gonna go back up here. We're gonna select our, let's say if it's not selected, then you just click on it with your arrow. And then you can go up here and a lot of times it'll be in millimeters and you can go up to inches or whatever, you know, measurement that you want. Uh, and then you can choose, you know, I need this to be um, a half inch tall. So we're going to go in here and put in uh, 0.5 and whew, hang on a second. <laughs> I think I'm doing that in the wrong spot. Nope. Okay. So open that and then height needs to be 0.5 nope not point point five point five there we go so then that is going to be the width of what you need now it is now 0.995 it's almost an inch long so then you could change that by stretching it if you want um, a lot of times I do have to stretch things just a little bit or squish them in so that they'll fit on the handle of a silicone spatula just because, and that goes for bamboo spatulas as well, just because, you know, it's kind of hard to get them to fit and be legible. So you kind of have to play with it a little bit, but that is the basic gist of how you get that done. So now we're going to go over to the Glowforge and, and, uh, get this party started. Okay guys, so I've got my spatulas loaded into the Glowforge. Um, so when you're doing a, um, a very intricate piece where you need it to line up as close as possible, you'll have your best shot. So right here is the camera. You're gonna have your best shot of getting that lined up well. If you try your center, your items underneath that camera, because the camera kinda has a little bit of a fish eye uh, lens a little bit and if you place it farther out the farther away from that camera that you place your items the harder it's going to be for you to try to line things up so try to get it centered underneath that camera as best you can your areas that you're going to be uh, engraving so that's a pro tip there it'll help you a lot and save you a lot of frustration but we've got that loaded in there um, these are pretty heavy I don't think they're gonna blow around but if you're worried about them blowing around if you have something lighter, you're gonna to wanna to make you some of these little pins and you can set those in and just kind of like help hold your items. But I think they're gonna be all right and we're gonna get started. So when you're ready to start your Glowforge, you need to go into your web browser and you need to find the Glowforge app, which is app.glowforge.com. And that will take you to this area where you get started. Click create upload from file of which I have many 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 <laughs> oh, let's see spatulas and that's going to upload that and there's my spatulas there's a picture of my spatulas in there now then for the settings in here and we're going to say uncertified material and we're going to type in a thickness of let me see here I believe these are something like 0.4 or something uh, yeah 0.4 all right here we're going to go to engrave we're 
we're going to set our settings on 700, 80, and I'm going to leave it at 340 lines per inch because I want it to be a nice engrave. And let's see here. I'm actually going to go with 70. No, I think I'm going to keep it at 80. So that's going to be fun. Um, so, all right. And then auto, auto focus height. So it'll detect that for itself. So now we're going to go over here. And wait, where is my... Okay, sorry guys. Apparently it's loaded it way up here. I was like, where is my art? <laughs> Move this down here. We can go up here and, you know, zoom in. Alright, so pull this piece over here. Right here. And then this little feature here allows you to turn it however you need to turn it. Turn it, oops, turned it the wrong direction. Sometimes it takes a minute to get it to, to get it lined up the way you want it. All right, and then we'll get you going. And the next thing you need to do is move your cursor over to the ready and push that button. And it will prepare your print and tell you about how long it will take. You can hear the Glowforge kind of start up and it will do its autofocus. Alright, and now it's going to take 12 minutes and 41 seconds. And the reason it's going to take a little bit longer is because engraving does take longer. But then it also... Um, it get, takes longer the more lines per inch you have, or if you do HD quality, it will take a really long time. So just uh, give, give yourself some time. It depends on, you know, the final outcome of what you're wanting to do. If you're just doing something that can go real quick and doesn't have to be perfect quality, then, you know, it's not going to take you very long. But if you want your final quality to be nice, then you're going to want to take a little bit extra time. So. Um, there are some tricks you can do um, as far as defocusing your laser so that um, you can get a, you know, fairly smooth engrave without lines and ridges in it um, but and a little bit faster, but um, that's a tip for another day. <laughs> so let's get this started. All right, so this blinking light means that the Glowforge is ready, so we're going to push that and the Glowforge is going to get to work.
Okay guys, so you can see that these look really, really awful. Like they're all charred and burnt looking, but I guarantee you, I, I assure you that this will be okay. <laughs> this is how silicone looks when it's had flame added to it. Um, so this will wash off like immediately. It just all washes off and it doesn't leave any stains. It doesn't leave any black stuff. So I will show you once I get them washed. Okay guys, just finished up. I'll get you a closer view. What this looks like, it looks really awful, but do not distress. This all washes off. wash these in the sink, just, you know, rinsing them with the sink. You can use a soft scrubber if you need to. But. Okay, and this is what they look like. Super cute. And so I did use just a soft scrub brush, uh, like a, uh, for cleaning your dishes, just a soft one, and gently scrubbed it, and all of that stuff just came right out. I didn't even have to do it for very long, just to, you know, circular motion up and down a couple of times and it was all cleaned out so there we go easy way to uh, personalize some silicone spatulas